I had a hard time deciding what to say for this video because in my head, there has to be some magic sequence of words, some specific mathematical pattern of phrases to get everyone on the same page and in agreement that every life has value. But black and brown lives aren't always treated as such. That racism, both individual and systematic, is still an urgent crisis in America today, but there is hope to overcome it. That people should not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the character of their soul, and as cliche as that sounds, that's not the reality that black people live in. Thus, what has come to be known as the Black Lives Matter movement has erupted, the modern civil rights movement, the inspiration behind this painting. Another brown body buried under the weight of police brutality, under the weight of a knee on a neck. But it's more than that. We're also fighting for the injustices that are not televised. We're fighting for the black woman in her job who's getting paid less than the white man below her. We're fighting for the black people who don't see themselves represented in leadership. We're fighting for the black kids in schools with little to no supplies, resources, qualified teachers, money for a private tutor or math camp, but are called dumb when they don't perform as well as the rich kids in the private and fully funded school across town. We're fighting to close the education and opportunity gaps. We're fighting to close the wage gaps. We're fighting for the black queer community who's not being fought for. We're fighting because black people are over three times more likely to be killed by police. And of those killings, we are 1.3 times more likely to be unarmed. And still statistically, 99% of killings by police don't result in officers being charged. We want our truth to be acknowledged, understood, and accepted as part of America's reality. And a common misconception is that criticizing America means you just hate this country, or that talking about racism or stating the fact that black lives matter means that you are anti-white and anti-police, and that's just not true. Being sick and tired of racism and having love for your country are not mutually exclusive. You discipline your children because you love them and want them to be better. America is our child and to love our country is to fight for it. And I'm not talking about Black Lives Matter, the organization, or what some think is a political agenda. I'm talking about Black Lives Matter, the movement that is bringing people together in the streets, on social media, in their jobs, in their neighborhoods, to fight against the oppression of so many. The statement that value and merit is within brown bodies and we don't deserve to be treated as less than. The undebatable fact that my life matters, my mother's life, matters, my daddy's life matters, that black lives matter, period. And if you are not convinced and have an immovable negative thought in your head of what the phrase black lives matter means and represents, then you are entitled to your opinion, but don't use that as an excuse to not do anything. You cannot like the phrase while still contributing to this civil rights, human rights movement. I'm sad that we're spending more time breaking down and arguing over the exact wordage of a phrase than we are focusing on the actual events that are happening that brought this phrase to life. Do not use the distractions of the different narratives of this phrase as a get out of jail free card. Because we all need to show up. We all need to stand for this. The betterment of any group in society makes that society better as a group. We need to acknowledge that a problem for the rights and liberties of any group in our country is a problem for us all. Is that not the foundation of our constitution? I quote, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge, i.e. reduce the privileges or immunities, i.e. freedoms of citizens of the United States, nor deny any person the equal protection of the law, end quote. The statistics of police killings against African Americans and the disproportionately and more harshly imprisonment and incarceration of black people is not upholding what I just read from our American Constitution. 
What Dr. Fauci said about wearing masks holds true for addressing racism. He said, quote, I don't know how to explain to you that you should care for other people, end quote. It's not enough to be silently not racist, but it's past time to be openly and boldly anti-racist. The goal isn't to say I don't see color. The goal is I see your color. I see your gender. I see your sexual identity and I accept you. I love you. I see your worth. I see your value. I see you are different than me, but equal. You are different than me, but still worthy. You matter and you don't matter despite your differences. You matter because of them. Our unique experiences, culture, and diversity weave the most beautiful and colorful tapestry of creative perspectives. Diversity is a strength, not a weakness. My granddaddy told us stories of how he searched all around the city of Montgomery, Alabama, and eventually had to travel to an entirely different city because no white man in Montgomery would sell him a truck for his business. He told us how he used to work for a white man who once commanded him to get in this unsafe hole to perform some work. And after my granddaddy refused, the white man told him, in word, get in that hole or I'm gonna put you in it. That man might still be alive, functioning in our society today, or more likely that man raised children and taught them to think like that. That it's we versus them, we above them, them below us. And those children with those generational biases are now our teachers, our police officers, our judges and jurors, our doctors, our bosses. They're people who have the power to make big decisions on the paths that our lives take. And you have to understand that that makes a difference. That's why a study came out recently stating that black babies are three times more likely to die when cared for by white doctors. Does that mean that all white doctors are awful human beings? No, of course not. But it means that there are people in the system with those biases and discriminations who are neglecting or hurting us with their power. That is systematic and structural racism. Are all cops bad? No, not at all. But one bad apple can spoil the whole bunch and the Bible says you judge a tree by its fruit. We need to weed out the roots of poison in our systems to make a change. But before we can do that, we must acknowledge it. But instead of talking about the darkness that is racism, I want to talk about what's important to you. Take a moment to think about your values. What are your morals? What's your definition of right versus wrong? With that in mind, think about a human being kneeling on the neck of an unarmed human being for nine minutes. Does that line up with your values? Now imagine you're in your home, sleeping in bed with your significant other next to you, and in the middle of the night, your door is violently broken down by three men in plain clothes. No knock, no warning. Your significant other, thinking this is a home invasion, grabs his legal and licensed gun to protect himself and his girlfriend, a gun that this country constantly demands is our right to own in order to protect ourselves from situations exactly like what this seems to be. And in that scary moment, he still has the presence of mind to aim down instead of shooting a kill shot at the invaders. And he shoots one of them in the leg. And the three men who just smashed down your door and broke into your house in the middle of the night respond by releasing a hail of bullets into the apartment, shooting through closed blinds from the outside patio, not knowing or caring who was inside, bullets ending up in neighbor's apartment with small children nearby. And eight of these bullets hit you. In the span of seconds, you were sleeping, awakened, scared, and shot eight times because these cops wanted to search for drugs that they did not find because you didn't have any. Does that line up with your morals and what you think is right versus wrong? Breonna Taylor was 26 years old, working as an EMT in two emergency rooms, responding to the coronavirus pandemic. And that's how her life ended, at the hands of those sworn to protect and serve. 
And worse still, is that after these three cops stop shooting, after their barrels cool down, after they put the boyfriend in handcuffs, and after the heat and chaos of the moment subsided, Brianna Taylor lay bleeding out in the hallway of her own home, still living, still fighting for life for several minutes and no medical attention was given to her. The EMT who risked her life to save the lives of others was offered no help to save her own from the cops who just shot her eight times. And then Brianna Taylor died. So do laws and systems that are in place that protect those officers from being charged, that protect bad cops from accountability, does that line up with your values and the values you want your country to uphold? Black Lives Matter is a demand, a call to action, a call for justice. The phrase all lives matter creates a false sense of security that all lives are treated the same and that's just not true. It was created to distract from the oppressions of many by tending to the comfort of a few. But great change happens outside of our comfort zone. Yes, of course, we all agree that all lives matter and hold value and significance, but we don't treat all lives as such. All lives cannot matter until black lives do. People also like to bring black on black crime into these conversations, asking, well, why don't you protest when a black person kills another black person? But when that happens, with black on black, white on white crime, cause they all exist, but when it happens, the killer is immediately arrested, charged and put behind bars. Justice is served without us having to convince society to do it or beg a judge to see that what happened was wrong. But when a bad cop does it, he walks free with paid leave, a GoFundMe account and a group of people dehumanizing the victim. Yes, civilian crime is terrible, but these are different situations. One, justice is served, and one is not. One has consequences, and one does not. And I know speaking about these things is hard. I've received hate messages and have been called a disgusting, worthless piece of S-word for simply creating this painting that you're seeing. But I boldly and proudly present it to you anyways because I have to. I have to stand for what I know is right. And to any white person listening to this, I'm not shaming you for your privilege and different opportunities, but how you use your privilege is what matters. You can use your privilege to hold others accountable when you see racism taking place, and you can amplify the voices of the unheard and ignored. Howard Zinn once said, quote, we don't have to engage in grand heroic actions to participate in the process of change. Small acts when multiplied by millions of people can transform the world." End quote. Your privilege is a power and behind closed doors when no one is looking is where progress begins. What side of history do you want to be on? And to my black and brown people watching this, I send so much encouragement your way. This fight is tough and long and seemingly never ending, but we are making a difference. In the months since George Floyd's death, the world has witnessed the largest and most diverse civil rights movement in history. Some of the most honest and passionate anti-racist conversations are taking place. People and companies are speaking out with us. Confederate statues that only serve as a painful reminder of the original sin of this country are being taken down. Louisville, Kentucky passed Brianna's Law, making no-knock warrants unlawful. The NFL came out and openly admitted they were wrong for not listening to their players years ago and encouraged people to speak out and peacefully protest. The NBA is playing games with Black Lives Matter written on the court investigations and reforms are being launched in police departments and practices across the country and for the first time in American history. A woman of color is running on a presidential ticket. A black and Indian American woman named Kamala Harris made history. Our brown skinned baby girls are seeing evidence that they can do anything. We are worthy of the equality that we're fighting for. We will crawl if it means our children can run with the carefree liberties of freedom and justice for all. We will hold fire to the feet of those in power and leadership, even if our own hands begin to burn. But remember, though we are strong, we are human. Take care of your mental health. 
check in on those around you, rest when you need to, turn off the news when it's too much, and know that despite the hate, you are loved. You are important, you are valuable, your existence matters. We are created in God's image for a reason and we are supposed to be here. No matter how many times they try to bury us, we will rise and rise again, seeds bursting into bloom, blossoming with petals of resilience, taking root in the land they were not prepared to share. Tell me in the comments what Black Lives Matter means to you and how you relate to what I said. Like this video if you enjoyed this painting or what I was talking about, and please subscribe if you want to see more art videos from me in the future. Also, you can buy apparel, poster prints, and canvas prints of this painting on my website on artxsun.com. That's A-R-T-X-S-U-N.com. God bless, make sure you vote, stay safe, and thank you so much for listening.